visual aspects of learning design. Welcome back. We are back in our regular programming where I'm going to be covering a variety of different topics. Um, so I always love to hear from you in the comments what kinds of videos, tutorials, pro tips that you're looking for. Hi, my name is Patricia Regeer with Regeer Education, and I just, I'm, I'm working on a few different things um, about OWL, about WebEx, I'm working on that, and it's not quite ready for today, so I'm going to work on it this week, um, so that will probably be next week, but I thought, you know, this is another one of those examples where I hit record, and I am just going to share. Um, the kind of uh, rich value that my clients get when I work with them, where it's in the moment, and I'm asking them questions and responding to directly their needs. So I'm talking to you, and I thought I would talk today about the visuals when it comes to visual aspects of learning design. So that could be in images. Uh, that could be so, you know, I, I like to cover the variety of different learning preferences that the experiential, the activities, all of those pieces are really important. But um, one of the pieces that I am very strong at is the visual aspect. So beyond images, it could be video clips, which also then would have the um, auditory, you know, hearing uh, different pieces, but the visual aspects could be telling a story, painting that picture visually. Um, so that again, it might be through the auditory or words or text uh, that you're sharing and painting the pictures. Now, what picture do I want to paint for you? For example, um, updating PowerPoint slides. That, uh, you know, if you're working with someone, um, you know, it it takes time to find the, the visuals that really emphasize your content. But there's a few things that I look for when I am creating, uh, updating materials, my own, and selecting photos, for example, or different visuals or creating infographics or different things. So I thought today I would share with you some of the things that I take for granted that happen quickly in my mind, but it doesn't happen always really quickly when you're searching for images. You can speed up the process with some of these aspects as well. So some of the things that I keep in mind, um, diversity. Uh, representing your audience is really important that people see themselves in the content. So culturally, different shapes and sizes, different genders, uh, different abilities. It can be even subtle. Um, one of the pictures I selected for, I think it was one of my clients recently, may have been a course development. Um, there was someone in a wheelchair um, at a desk. The person didn't even see that uh, because it doesn't always have to be overtly noticeable, but sometimes it does need to be uh, in uh, intentionally visible. Um, but people need to see themselves in the photos. It's really important uh, to consider that not it, diversity can cover a lot of different elements to just consider that. You have a diverse audience also with technology, um, you know, uh, literacy. So, you know, to consider all these different aspects. Now, with the photos, I would recommend also when you have them in a slide or you're showcasing that, like right now, I could be just, and I was really impressed when I was attended a meeting the one day, uh, a learning experience, and the person described themselves. I'm a white woman um, with brown hair. I'm wearing glasses, I have blue eyes. Behind me are some of my books um, in my bookshelf. And my book is featured here too. I have a plant, a couple plants, a mug behind me and the an owl 
um, it's a it's a microphone camera uh, thing just slightly in the back. It's kind of a bookshelf behind me. So that can take a lot of time. You want to be very quick in natural with your descriptions. But when you have slides on a slide deck, if you're when I'm filming, I'm considering that I'm using this the the audio file for a podcast. And I'm also using this for a YouTube video. I will take the text or create something completely different for the blog or article as well, highlighting some key points. And I might have some visuals with it too. The alt text with those different posts and parts of the blog are really important describing those visuals if someone can't see it. So considering all these different ways people are receiving information, when you're going through slides, people don't always not always talk about the photo that's on the slide. Um, so you can do that briefly here. You know, uh, you might be describing it. It might not feel natural. You need to know your audience, too. But that visual needs to really emphasize the content, add to it for what you're saying um, and really kind of make the content come alive. A visual can make all the difference, but when we're selecting visuals, they need to feel safe that we're also not centering out anybody or representing someone um, in a misrepresentation because that's not our intention. So that people feel included, heard, seen, um, and that they feel safe in the learning experience and feel that they matter that you're considering describing different things. Another thing I can describe, I'm wearing a black and white striped top. Um, so if you're hearing this through uh, a podcast, those are in, uh, elements that you're not getting and maybe they don't matter um, as well. So you can decide in your context too. So visuals can make a huge impact on making that content come off the page, become alive, become relevant, and go beyond the auditory. I'm just talking right now. This feels more lecture style. Normally, I would have visuals or I insert them um, when I'm editing a video. Sometimes it's necessary, sometimes not. But the visual aspect can really, really add a fantastic element and some things that I'm thinking about too for some of the, the pro tips, creating them in a um, infographic. This infographic includes the words culturally diverse, intentionally inclusive, variety of ages and genders, and also don't forget about body types. The infographic also states variety of abilities and consider neural diversity and in just the language and pictures that you're using. And when you're using graphs in a slide deck or you're describing anything or showing something, it's really important that you aren't relying on people being able to see the differences between the colors, that you have labels as well. And that you describe it as well, that here I have this graph, what it's def, uh, you know demonstrating is 50% feel this way and 50% feel that way. And you know, describe, make sure all the elements that you're using really um, do what they're, they're meant to do and not take for granted that everybody can see, hear, um, or experience the materials in the same way. So those are just a few hot tips. I have more that I'm going to share within the blog and article. So I'll, I'll share those links below wherever you are watching or listening to this. Um, and my name is Patricia Regeer. I hope that this is helpful for you. I'm excited about the upcoming videos as well. And I want to hear from you um, what you liked about this video, what resonate with you and what you want to hear and and see um, uh, going forward as well. Thanks for checking this out. And until next time, create learning experiences that help your audience turn into participants. And there's a lot of different ways that you can do that to facilitate those figurative light bulbs to go off for that learning experience. Thanks for checking this out.